Anytime, anywhere. ABC News Now. Start here. Hello and welcome to Time Tunnel, where we find out what was making news in the past. I'm Alicia Davis in New York, and today we travel back to this day in 1966. ABC News filed a special report, The Space Frontier, the launch of Gemini 9. ABC science editor Jules Bergman had the story. We interrupt our regular program so that ABC News can bring you in color this special report on the Gemini 9 mission. Today, with the off-delayed Gemini launch from Cape Kennedy, ABC News continues its comprehensive coverage of the space frontier. Two days ago, the launch of the ATDA target vehicle. This morning, the launch of the Gemini 9 astronauts. The Gemini 9 mission, including man's longest walk in space. Complete coverage brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Ford has a better idea. From ABC Space Headquarters, here is ABC News Science Editor Jules Bergman. Good morning. The third attempt at launching Gemini 9 is underway at pad 19, with the countdown now standing at T-minus 34 minutes and counting. Astronauts Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan, now undisputed masters of the pad 19 holding time record, are back in Gemini 9. The white room cleared and the erector lowered. The bulky data relay and launch control has been fixed, and NASA says will launch even if it breaks down today. Stafford and Cernan have recycled, so have the Titan II rocket and Gemini 9. We've recycled and hope you have too. And soaring over the Pacific on its 29th revolution now is the ATDA, the target docking vehicle for Gemini 9. Stafford and Cernan working out this week, yesterday and day before after the scrub, keeping their muscles in shape, their minds relaxed after the frustration of the second scrub of launching Gemini 9. Cernan especially using barbells, keeping in shape for working with the 166-pound astronaut maneuvering unit. Both men are in good shape, mentally and physically, declared themselves ready to go today, eager, as the erector went down and they could see the skies over pad 19 once again. And over the skies of the Pacific is the ATDA, the target docking vehicle for Gemini 9, now on its 29th revolution. No one is sure whether it is set up for docking, whether the shroud or cover on its docking collar has been jettisoned or not. If it has been, Gemini 9 can dock. If not, a new flight plan will be used. Tom and Gene will be the first to know when Gemini 9 rendezvous later today with the ATDA if all goes well. The close-up at Pad 16, as Stafford and Cernan left a short time ago from ABC's Bernard Eisman. For Tom Stafford, astronaut, the sixth trip from the suit hangar to the base of pad 19 and the ride 100 feet up in the elevator to the white room and his Gemini 9. For his co-pilot, Eugene Cernan, the third trip to pad 9. They were up this morning, had a medical check, pronounced just as fit as they were two days ago, given the breakfast of scrambled eggs and steak. There is astronaut Stafford in suit, astronaut Cernan from the van, thumbs up to the workers and walking to the elevator door to take them up to the 100-foot white room level. The humor at that 100-foot white room level has been uh, somewhat accelerated in the past few days. In the elevator, there's a sign this morning that says the down capability of this elevator has been removed. Reference, of course, to the two previous trips they've made up for Gemini 9 both times to come down. In the White Room, there's another sign hanging over the spacecraft prepared by the White Room crew. Buzz Aldrin and Jim Lovell, the backup pilots who've been in the capsule three and a half hours this morning checking it out, have a poem ready for them. And the poem hanging there over Gemini 9 this morning reads, 
We have been kidding before, but not anymore. Get yourselves into space, or we'll take your place. And there the elevator opens at the white room level, and astronauts Stafford and Cernan, ready for the third time to be inserted into the Gemini 9 spacecraft. This is Bernard Eisman. Now here's Jules Bergman. And our count at T-minus 30 minutes with Stafford and Cernan safely in the uh, Gemini 9 spacecraft waiting for the liftoff signal some 30 minutes from now if all goes well. Unless there be any doubt of their eagerness to go, Tom and Gene presented a two-foot-long match today to the chief test conductor, Frank Carey of the Martin Company, a match seemingly to light off the Titan II once and for all and to get off pad 19. Stafford and Cernan hold the undisputed time record for pad 19, Stafford particularly waiting in elevator time. It now adds up to something over 12 hours in four launch attempts, uh, two on Gemini 6, two on Gemini 9. And today, Tom's fifth attempt to get off the pad. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. T-minus 60. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. We will get ignition at zero in the countdown. Some three seconds thereafter, liftoff will come. During that period, there will be a period of about 1.8 seconds where we possibly will have the capability of shutting down if necessary. T-minus 35 seconds and counting. T-minus 30. T-minus 25 seconds and counting. We're on an automatic sequence. Everything appears to be going well during this final phase. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have ignition. We have a liftoff. It looked like 39 minutes, 32 seconds after the hour. Plus 17 seconds. My dynamics reports the thrust looks good. The roll program has started. The roll program is completed. The pitch program has started. Confirmed at 3933 three after the hour. We have reached 50 seconds into the flight. The spacecraft and its booster are moving at 740 miles per hour. We are now reaching for four nautical miles in altitude.
guidance officer reports that the track looks real good to him. Flight dynamics and guidance and surgeon all report they look good. The spacecraft now is approximately 120 nautical miles downrange and approximately 60 nautical miles in altitude. And so it looks like Tom Stafford and Gene Sorin have finally made it. Flight dynamics says we're right down the middle. Now about 70 nautical miles in altitude and approximately coming up on 200 nautical miles downrange. The track looks good, excellent. Flight Director Gene Kranz has just completed a final status check. We are green and go, and that information has been passed on to Tom Stafford in Gemini 9. Gemini 9 is now 280 nautical miles downrange and approximately 80 nautical miles in altitude. And that is all the time tunnel that we have for today. Now back to the present with ABC News Now.